Hi folks, so today we're going to talk about math and specifically in Python, uh, how we would do adding, subtracting, multiplication, and division, and also making sure our order of operations is covered. So um, typically multiplication is done before addition, but if we do want to fix that, uh, we can use parentheses to do that. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of these operations. Um, I put together a starting program, and you'll see in the starting program, I made sure to put good comments. And remember, uh, as we talked about in a previous video, the comments um, are totally ignored by Python. So Python, if we run this program, it's going to result in no errors, but no output either. Uh, because the program is is not designed to do anything. This is all documentation for us. And uh, my goal is that you could actually read this and understand what's going on. So you'll see that these comments will match what's in the PowerPoint presentation. So first of all, um, basic arithmetic operations. If you look at your numeric keypad on the right side of your um, keyboard, over there, um, you'll see that you do have those four operations showing up over there. Plus sign for addition, that's pretty easy. Minus for subtraction. Uh, the asterisk is going to be used for multiplication, and the forward slash will be used for division. Uh, parentheses or parentheses. Um, so I know sometimes we're used to being able to, in, in math, say 3x. Um, if we were writing this in a Python program, we have to, to say 3 asterisk x, um, just because that's how it knows that it's two separate things that we are dealing with. So let's start with a basic example. Um, we want to create a variable called total, and we want to take 3 plus 5 and store that result in total. Um, of course, we could just say total equals 8, but <clears throat> bear with me as we ramp up into these um, mathematical operations. So what we would do is we would go into Python and we would say total equals 3 plus 5. And what that would do is perform that mathematical operation, that addition, and store the results of that calculation in the variable total. And then... Once it's in total, we can do any sort of manipulation we might want. So um, print it, um, change it, use it in other calculations, anything like that would be fine. Uh, likewise, subtraction is going to be very similar. So let's say we want to calculate a variable called do. Um, it's going to be 50, uh, 500 minus 50. So, you know, again, we could do that in our heads probably for 50. Um, but if we want the program to calculate it, it will be 50 minus 500. And then that result is going to be stored in this variable called do. And then, of course, later in the program, we could then use that for just about any purpose uh, we might need it. Uh, so let's take a look at those two examples one and two here. So... Total equals 3 plus 5 would be how we would calculate that. And for our second example, 2 equals 500 minus 50. Now, if we run this program right now, it's going to be a successful run. It's going to say, great, but we get no output. And the reason is because when we need output, we, of course, do need to print, uh, typically. We, we also have other things we could send to a printer, we could put it in the file, we could transmit it over the internet. A lot of stuff that, you know, for an entry-level course you don't want to worry about today. Uh, so what I will add on top of what's in the PowerPoint presentation <clears throat> is a print of each of these. And maybe what we'll do is we'll even do the compound print statement. Kind of tough to type and look at the screen, I guess. Um, and we'll do a compound print statement. 
and this way we can actually see what our output is and we would again assume example one the result should be eight five plus three is eight example two should be 450 and assuming i haven't made any mistakes we are indeed getting those results now again dealing with numbers like this I, we could probably just do the calculations ourselves but where this is really going to become powerful is when we take other variables and calculate that um, and eventually when we get user input which we'll do in a future video <clears throat> so let's say we want to take a set of variables one called number one and one called number two and put that into a variable called total a couple little nuances here first of all you would say um, what are the current values of number one and number two based on what we've written in our program and if you look, I'll give you a moment to think. They don't have values. So what would happen is, if I were to try and continue this, we see number one is not defined when I run that program. And the reason is because we haven't given number one a value, so therefore it doesn't know what to add. So if I were to go in and say number one equals 45 and number two equals 55, expectation here would be that it ends up with 100 as the... Uh, as the result, and let's see if uh, math still works, and it does. So we see 100. Now the other thing that's a little weird, and it will be something that you'll get used to maybe a little more in future videos, um, I do want to at least show it, even if it doesn't make 100% sense at this point, is notice when we reuse a variable, so we had total before, and we have total again. So once we use total again, whatever's previously in total will disappear unless we tell it otherwise, which we're not doing here. So that previous total, that eight, uh, totally gone at this point. Now, taking a look, uh, multiplication and division, um, kind of combining these things here. Uh, first of all, let's assume we have um, a variable um, called double time that we're going to uh, store the result of our hourly pay multiplied by two. So we make $15 an hour. If we're getting paid double time, we would then be paid $30 an hour. So this would be the way that we would calculate it uh, using this line right here. If you were, you know, if you caught what I was saying before about values needing to be declared, if I tried to type in this exact line, we would once again get an error because hourly rate is not defined. And the same thing would apply to example five. Um, we're creating something called average grade and we're setting it equal to the total points divided by three. So let's say there are three tests and we want to find our average score. So we would need this value to be initialized or have some value put into it. And same here, those, those two variables would need um, initial values. So again, our double time equals hourly rate times two. And again, we'll we'll take a look at that error, and hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is one that I find a lot of times that our students don't always catch on to immediately, like. We're getting an error um, and you know realistically with a lot of these programming languages it's it's not always easy to figure out what it is saying to you and this is going to be one of your big big things you can do to uh, enhance your programming career learn to read the error messages i mean realistically we take this into google 
and we could probably find some help too or you know show it to somebody who is working maybe in one of your uh, department labs you know obviously our department has a lab where students can stop in for programming um, so we get that error and again the reason is because hourly rate before we do anything has to be set equal to something and there we go if our hourly rate was 15 we are getting paid double time so double our normal rates and we see that that does end up with $30 Uh, for example, five. We see average grade equals total points uh, divided by three. And we would want to, of course, print that out. And as we said, the error here would arise because right now total points doesn't have a value. In a larger program, we would probably ask the user, what's test one score, what's test two score, what's test three score, total them, and then calculate the average. Uh, again, we'll do something like that in a, in a future video. So, um, let's say total points equals, we got an 80 plus a 90 plus a... 70. I'll, I'll keep the math simple. So our average score for those three tests should be an 80%. And of course, we could have also said total points equals, um, you know, 240 or, you know, whatever value we wanted. And we can see that this calculates 80. Um, in an earlier video, we talked about how numbers are represented. Notice the point zero at the end. Uh, this becomes a decimal. It's not really a big deal for Python. Um, in other languages, it gets very fussy with, with that, but we're okay here. So basically, multiplication, division, the, the main trick here is the asterisk, the star for multiplication, and the forward slash for division. Now, if we were doing, um, we're going to calculate a weekly paycheck. So you make 40, uh, you work 40 hours at $10 an hour, and then you work another 10 overtime hours at $15 an hour. Just to prove that order of operations is going to respect um, your normal mathematical order of operations. In this case, what we would say is paycheck equals 40 times 10 plus 10 times 15. And We don't have to initialize anything because in this case I put the numbers specifically there, but um, you know, if we realistically again we'd probably be using other variables. Now, at this point, we should have normal math would say 40 times 10 is done first, which is 400. 10 times 15 is then done, which is 150, and then you add the results of that multiplication and we should get $550. And let's see what happens. And we can see example six is $550. So it's working out pretty well. But we do have to be careful with that order of operations, just like you would in any math class. Um, this is why, you know, at our college, it, we do have a math prerequisite on this course because if uh, if you don't understand order of operations, it's very difficult to, to master stuff like this. So, for example, let's say we wanted to uh, take um, the amount of money we have. And what we're going to do is we're going to take how many quarters you have and how many quarters I have. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.25 or 25 cents. So, 
if we were to go in here and uh, first of all, let's say you have 10 quarters and I have, uh, to keep the math easy, I also have 10 quarters because we will have to initialize these. And we'll say total money equals your quarters plus my quarters multiplied by 0.25 and this is going to be example 7 and at this point if I were to ask you if we have 20 basically we have 20 quarters um, that should be um, how much give me a moment to think Should be five dollars. Now if we run this program we are going to get an incorrect result and we're going to see that somehow 20 quarters is twelve dollars and fifty cents which last I checked is not the correct value. So I don't know if you see the issue here I kind of hinted at it uh, but the problem is um, you're going to need to tell it that the addition gets done first. And the way we would do that, like in you know your regular everyday math, is we have to specify using parentheses what operation gets done first. So we only need that when we're overriding the default of multiplication coming before um, addition in this case. So if we were to do this, it would do first 10 multiple, or 10 plus 10, which would be 20, and then multiply that by 0.25, and that should give us our correct result, which is $5. Now I will tell you, this is one of the, uh, we'll give it a run, and yeah, it works, that's good. But this is one of the worst types of errors because it gives you a result. It's just not the correct result. Um, my department chair um, used to give, um, I don't know if she still gives it or not, but gives a program to say how many cans of paint would it take for, you know, to paint a normal sized room. And every time she gave the program, somebody would come out with, you know, oh, it'll take 40,000 cans of paint to paint a a normal size room like eight foot by you know ten feet room um, and the program gave an answer it's just not giving the correct answer so we do want to uh, we do want to always check and make sure we are getting correct results um, when I teach Excel we calculate you know mortgage payment and I, I realize people don't necessarily pay mortgages but um, if you're you know buying a $200,000 house and your monthly payment is $30,000 a month for 30 years, you're probably getting ripped off. Um, and what that means, again, is that something's wrong with the, the programming or the formula or, or however you're calculating that. So uh, these are some examples of math uh, that we can do here. Again, parentheses in the previous example, example six, were not necessary because in that case the multiplication should be done first so the only time we need them is in this example seven where we want to override that default and we want to say do the um, addition first in a future video we'll come back to how do we do input we'll uh, take a couple of these examples and, and get user values and we'll see what happens when the user decides to put in a letter when you're expecting a number uh, you know as you can imagine it's not going to work out well so um, I'll have a link to this code in the description for you to download from uh, the github site and uh, hopefully this got you moving forward